The COVID-19 outbreak has led to the creation of the National Coronavirus Command Council, which collects all the national and global data and uses this information to formulate South Africa's responses. In spite of all the briefings we've had at this time, there's still a sense that South African citizens are not fully aware of uh, uh, what, the what and the way of uh, following regulations. We're joined now by the minister in the presidency, who's also the leader in the council, Minister Jack. And Ntembo, a very good morning to you. Afternoon, rather. Thank you so much for joining us. Hey, good afternoon, and thank you very much for having us. We appreciate it. Minister Ntembo, let's start where you started yesterday. A reminder to South African citizens that we're still in lockdown level five until the end of the month. Definitely. The, the, the president announced a lockdown. Um, and uh, then announced for up to the 16th and uh, then added 14 days the lockdown at level five let's just explain that the lockdown at level five expires on the 30th of april uh, on the 1st of may we are proposing as government a continuation of the lockdown except that it will be at level four. And that's what we are then asking comments, uh, particularly by the sectors that will be easing into activity. And uh, the various uh, trade unions have been also been consulted on this matter. But of course, we have also consulted political parties uh, so that uh, we also get their views, uh, which activities should we bring on stream? So the consultation has been happening, but we are also saying to South Africans now, they can also make their submissions on what activities should stream in. The lockdown remains. Uh, the lockdown has been declared. We are all under a state of disaster. So that doesn't change, including all of us observing uh, social distancing, all of us ensure, ensuring that we don't touch one another uh, so that uh, we then infect one another. So all these matters, that uh, hygiene precautions that we have taken will remain in place, including in those companies that will be opening from the 1st of May. So sometimes it feels to some people like the council is a parallel government. Just take us through the composition and the work of the National Coronavirus Command Council. <laughs> the, the, the council is led by the president. The president is in charge. The president uh, uh, is the leader of both the council and the leader of government. So there are 20 members of cabinet. You, you know, cabinet has 28 members. So in the National Coronavirus uh, Command Council, you have got 20 of those members out of the 28 members of cabinet who are sitting. Of course, also, the deputy president sits in the Coronavirus uh, Command Council. But when matters needs consultation, they need a policy direction by cabinet. Cabinet does sit. We have had special sittings of cabinet. Uh, one of the issues that cabinet has agreed on is this risk-adjusted approach to easing the lockdown and the various levels that you'll have a lockdown like we have now. The lockdown we have now is a lockdown at level five. That lockdown only allows for essential services, only allows uh, workers who are working in essential services to be at work, including yourself. Broadcasting is also an essential service. But <laughs> the next lockdown under level four will then have other activities like other sectors, like your agricultural sector, some part of that sector, your manufacturing sector, some part of that sector, your retail sector. The document explains 
what are these economic activities we want to bring on stream? So it is still within the ambit of the lockdown. And as I've said, we have consulted with political leaders uh, who are represented in parliament. We have consulted uh, with the unions who will be making their submissions tomorrow at noon. We have consulted with business who are the ones that will be opening, by the way, at, uh, from the first. They will also be making their submissions tomorrow. But we are also saying to the public, make your submissions too. These are um, uh, uncharted days, uncharted territories. We have never been under COVID-19. All of us. Yeah. It's the first time. And the only means we have of consulting with the public is what we did yesterday. Putting the document for public comments in various platforms of government. Minister, let's just play a clip of Minister Patel uh, making that uh, call for South Africans to also take part in this process. We recognize that within the constraints of time, because we have to move rapidly, but we must have a process of public consultation, that we need to hear the voices of South Africans on this matter, absolutely critical. So while we will be talking to sectors, we also will be monitoring the conversations where we can on social media. We'll be getting feedback uh, from uh, uh, citizens. Uh, they'll be talking to uh, members of parliament, uh, their political parties. They'll be talking directly to us uh, via the representations uh, that they will be making and the information that they're sharing with us. And this process of public consultation acts as a means of dampening special interest lobbies that try to put uh, one point of view across. Ultimately, we need to make sure that we act in the broader interest. And we can only do so by being open-minded and hearing the concerns that are coming, and of course taking the advice of the health and the medical experts. Of course, following this, you also publicized that call for public submissions of comments on the schedule of services to be phased in as per COVID-19 risk adjust, adjusted strategy to be implemented on the 1st of May. Minister, was this well thought through? Are the time frames sufficient for proper we, we consideration? Time frames. Between time now frames and the 1st of May. Submissions. Oh, yes. No, it, it, it was well thought. By the way, the first cabinet has considered this matter. Uh, we have even had, you know, that there is an advisory panel that advises the president on economic matters. We even had an opportunity, and these advisors are all over the world. Yeah. We had an opportunity to sit down with the advisory economic panel of the president. But also, we, we have had the advice of those who are advising the Minister of, uh, of Health. So, Minister, Very the good advisors. Is the question then is, why was this notice sent out so late uh, with a cutoff time at midnight, to, uh, at noon tomorrow? How much time will people have to, to send in constructive uh, 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 suggestions? Well, pe people, well, then let's first start by saying we are living in abnormal times. These are not normal times. Ordinarily, as government, we would have gone through various ministries. We would have gone to our people to say, can you make comments ordinarily? That's what we would have done. But under these conditions, uh, that need fast uh, response decisions on our parts, uh, the only time we have are the times that we have allocated. Uh, to the public and even to the sectors, particularly sectors that are implicated in the framework and, and in the risk adjusted strategy. That is the only time that we have available to us. Unfortunately, the COVID-19 is in command. We are not in command. We are still under lockdown, by the way. Maybe let, let's just make the point. 
The point is that we are not changing the rules of lockdown. For all ordinary South Africans, we are not expected to move around. We are still not expected to move around under level four, except those that will be going to work. We are expected not to touch one another. Those rules remain the same. We are expected to observe physical distancing. These rules will also apply even to companies that will open. But companies, as they open, they will not open with 100% employees coming on stream. Some will be 50%, some will be 20%, but we wanted companies to go there and make sure themselves that they are able to ease in economic activity in their various sectors. But of course, our people in the main, the most uh, hurdles to our lives remain, that we can't move from one province to another. Uh, we are expected to wash our hands regularly. We are still expected to ensure that there is social distancing between us wherever we are. And even those who need to go, those that are not going at work are those that are going to buy food, are those that are going to get medicine, are those that are going to get some money from the banks, are those that are going to get water. Those restrictions will remain. So we are not consulting on those restrictions because those restrictions already are part of the lives of South Africans. We are in the main consulting on businesses yes. that are opening up. Minister, can I ask you to clarify two things in this regard? One, this call for public participation. Is it a general uh, contribution or is it specifically about how we should help in moving to level four? And also, what platforms can South Africans use to reach out and submit their, their contribution? The, you, you, you will know that uh, what we are going to from the 1st of May, we are going to level four. The document has got all the levels, proposals from government. It has got level four, it has got level three, it has got level two, and all of us, I think including you, my friend, would like to get to level one, where everything will be normal. Where, where the we risk can will go be back reduced. To our normal lives. But there will be no risk at all. In fact, at level one, we'll have no risk at all. Uh, then, so therefore, we are in particular requesting South Africans to preferably focus on level four that we will be getting to on the 1st of May. What is their take on the proposals by government? Of course, they, they must also look at the other levels. Level three, what are we bringing in? Level two, what are we bringing in? Level one, of course, will be green. As you look at the country uh, shaded uh, or plotted uh, uh, colors, there is no green because green will mean that we have reduced all the risks that are inherent in our country. So, the, or the, in the country uh, profile, we, are, we have areas that are at level five, like your parts of Gauteng, parts of, uh, of KZN, parts of Western Cape, uh, parts of the, of, of the Free State, parts of the Eastern Cape. We have areas that are at level three, uh, we have areas that are at level two because there has been just been so few infections uh, in those parts of our country. But what is also more important, and again, is the point that you are raising. Are our health uh, activities ready for any huge injection of the virus, even in those areas that are at level two of infections as we speak. We can assure you that our health facilities might not be at that level that we require it to be. So these lockdowns also gives us an opportunity as a country 
to improve the capacity in our health institutions. You are right. At some stage, whether in July, whether in September or October, the infections will peak in our country. This is the reality. It has peaked in other countries. But when it peaks, will our health institutions, our hospitals, our clinics be ready to assist our people with coronavirus ailments and other opportunistic disease that accompanies the virus. Minister, at this stage, let's play another clip of the Minister of Cooperative Governance that created quite some conversation after the briefing yesterday. The cigarette issue. I did say that we are listening. Yes, the president announced the issue of cigarettes. We are hearing you, your arguments, and we will take it back um, and see what happens after those discussions. While listening government, uh, we have listened to, to you, and I think the other people who wanted smoking also have been speaking, but we are hearing. We'll take the matter back, and I, I will discuss it and see what comes out of it. All right, uh, Minister, that's in relation to the issue of cigarettes, but how do you respond to the criticism that whereas the President gives a directive, the Ministers are either deviating or not clear enough in their detailing of certain aspects, for instance, the resumption of the sale of cigarettes. The President says it will resume. The Minister of Cooperative Governance says it's still a conversation. What's the actual position? No, let, let, let's, let's, let's be clear. Let's, let me first respond to an issue. You have asked, where should the public respond to oh, yes, on yes. these uh, matters? Yes. The public can respond to this email, lockdown comments at cocta.gov.za. Oh, my word. Lockdown <laughs> comments, one word. Lockdown comments at cocta.gov. That's where the public can uh, direct their comments. To. But they also need to be guided by what we have also put in the framework. If you are saying you are bringing a comment, that comment must say which section of the, of the document, uh, which paragraph, uh, uh, which line, and what are your comments in relation to that so that we are we are clarified as we get this from our 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 public you you have then asked about the issue of cigarettes minister Nkosazana was correct we are consulting even the president when he said cigarettes will be available after this level Five lockdown, uh, the, the president is a Democrat. I've spoken to the president yesterday. The president was also listening to our press briefing and the inputs that came. He was inspired by many of the inputs that came. We can assure you that, uh, as, as Minister Nkosazana said, we will take the comments of our people seriously on any matter, including cigarettes, because we are a listening government. We are a caring government. And also, we don't believe that government has all the intelligence that is above 61 million South Africans. We can benefit a lot from what South Africans have to say. Therefore, this comment on cigarettes will come as part of what the public is saying on the measures that we put in place under level four we can assure you that uh, the government will respond to what our people are saying whether on cigarettes or on toala or liquor or on any other measures uh, that our people will respond on. We are a caring government. 
and uh, we we take the comments of our people seriously. Uh, therefore, there was no contradiction between what the minister of culture said and what the president said. All that the minister said is that we will take this matter back to cabinet. We will take this matter back to government so that we say what it is that you are saying around these issues. That's exactly what we're going to do. Minister Mtembu, we asked some of our viewers to contribute to this conversation on social media. We'd just like to take a look at some of the tweets that they have sent through at this moment. Thank you. All right, Desmond saying, uh, morning the agenda. I think he took a good decision because it will minimize people losing their jobs, but opening for cigarettes and not opening liquor, it makes no sense to me. Rather, he open both, uh, but... Uh, Okay, uh, my tweet is a bit cut off on the side. Rather, he opened both. Uh, um, minimize well, people losing their jobs, the but opening for cigarettes and not opening liquor, it makes no sense to me. Rather, he opened both, but put restrictions like takeaways. That's Desmond for you. I hope, Minister, you can hear that one. Let's look at another one. Safar saying, I'd like to ask uh, Jackson Tembu to clarify the age restriction, as mentioned yesterday, that people over 60 have to work from home or stay from home. I think it's a suggestion, but we'll hear what the minister says. Is this manda mandatory or, and could companies be fined if they don't adhere? Sihle says, uh, morning team, would like to ask the questions to Minister um, Tembu about pregnant women in the mining and retail industry because they might have to go back to work and they're a high risk. Some have to say, stay home. There's little said about them. All right, Minister, um, your thoughts about those few tweets we've just read? Let, let, let's start with the first one on cigarettes and liquor. I suspect we, that's going to come up a two, lot. <laughs> definitely. We, we, we will take those matters back to cabinet. And like we have said, by the way, cabinet is made up of human beings. You, you don't have people who are coming from outer space. Even the president himself is a human being. So that's why we are being assisted greatly by what our people are saying. The, we will then take the matter of cigarettes and liquor back to cabinet and to the coronavirus committee uh, so that uh, we have a relook at what we have said through the mouth of the president on cigarettes. But on, on the suggested age of 60, again, it was a suggestion. It's what we are putting in the document that those who are 60 and above this is what the, the World Health Organization has also advised all countries. Because people who are more susceptible and vulnerable to this virus are the elderly. So we are saying companies do whatever you can do to at least remove the elderly people uh, from your workplace. Uh, leave the young ones. Because even as you look at people, we have this uh, from yesterday, we have about 86 South Africans who have passed on as a result of this virus. I can assure you that the majority of them are people who are elderly because of their vulnerabilities to this uh, disease. We are therefore at stage four of the lockdown, or level four of the lockdown, we are saying to all companies, consider paying people who are 60 and above whilst they are working from home. It's a straightforward recommendation, and we hope that they will also respond to that recommendation. Similarly, uh, the other, well, we don't have it in, in the document, but it, it's something that I think makes sense on pregnant women uh, that we will also take back to the leadership uh, of the coronavirus command council so that they also put their views including the minister of health the good part is that we have got so 
so many ministers who are health wise in cabinet. Uh, you have the Mutualedis, you have Babu uh, Zuelim Kese, you have Mam Kosas and Adamine Zuma. So, indeed, uh, we, we believe that also this suggestion on pregnant women, we will bring it before the Coronavirus Committee on Wednesday uh, so that uh, the, the, the committee can then put its view on the matter. But I think these are good suggestions, by the way. Uh, and, and that will be what I will say to my colleagues, but then get professional advice mm -hmm. from those that have worked, in, including, by the way, social development. Uh, we also need to come into the party. That's so a very that important aspect. When ultimate, it's a very important aspect of social life. Yeah. So, Minister as we start to taper down our conversation, just take us into the back room in terms of what is being prepared as we prepare to go to level four. You, 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 you will know that uh, if South Africans, business, labor agrees with the thinking of government of uh, the lockdown, uh, being at stage four or level four on the first on Friday, we must be ready with regulations uh, that will guide all industry. As industry come back on stream, those that will come back on stream on the first of May, they must know what are do's and don'ts. Uh, therefore, those must be in the regulations. So that's what we are doing in the background now. Our colleagues, led by Mam Kosa Zanatamene Zuma, you will know that she is the minister responsible for the act that we are using for the lockdowns. Uh, it is called the National Disaster Management Act. So that act resides with the minister. But the minister working with the legal uh, minds in government who report to Minister Lamula, Justice. Then, of course, all of us, the, all the departments that are impacted upon by the framework of risk-adjusted strategy will have to come up with directions uh, that will then inform the regulations that we will put before the public and also regulations that and directions that will guide these companies that will bring on will bring some work economic work on stream so that's what we are doing in the background uh, we have got many people who are even working as we speak today uh, looking at regulations what needs to change if things were to remain as we are proposing but of course, whatever regulations that we are crafting now will have to take into account what the public is saying. That's why the meeting on Thursday, on, on, not on, on Wednesday, on Wednesday afternoon, we'll have a meeting of the Coronavirus Command Council led by the president to hear what are the regulations we have put in place now uh, to gave concrete meaning to level four, but what have those regulations taken into account? Did we take into account what our people have said, what the comments our people, of our people have said, what the various industries have said, what the various uh, federations in the workplace have said? So that's what we will be looking at on Thursday. Minister, as we say, Not Thursday, good, by the way, Wednesday. As we thank you and say goodbye to you, I just want to ask you a quick final one: Are you doing everything online these days, or uh, are you also having face-to-face -face meetings? We are doing most of the things online. The face-to-face -face meetings that we have are meetings of very few people that will allow social distancing. Meet meetings that will not allow social distancing are online, including the meetings that we have of the Coronavirus Command Council, they are online.
The meetings of cabinet are online. Uh, in fact, I've tweeted about this as well. So many of them, including meetings of myself with my senior managers, including meetings of various ministers with their senior managers, those meetings are online. So indeed, this uh, virus has also forced all of us to get to grips uh, with working online. Uh, and that's what government has been saying for some time, that uh, we must start appreciating the digital dividends. But the coronavirus has just, as the minister Kosa Zanazuma said yesterday, has just forced us as government to work online. And that applies to other sectors as well. There are many sectors who are working online. Let's thank you for your time today. Thank you very much, and thank you for having us. We really appreciate. Minister Mtembo is in the presidency.